hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Melissa and I'm a member of the training team at EMBL EBI and I will also be your host for today's webinar. In today's webinar we are joined by Michal Speck who is part of the ensemble team and he's hello. going to be speaking to us about visualizing your own data in the ensemble genome browser. We're also joined by his colleagues Astrid and Ben, who will be answering questions in the chat box during the webinar. So I'm going to hand over to Michal now to hear more about Ensemble and how you can use it to visualize your own data. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Um, hello, everyone. So welcome to this Ensemble webinar. As Melissa said, my name is Michal. And I'm here with my colleagues Astrid and Ben, who will be answering your questions in the chat box during the presentation. Um, and the structure for today is a short presentation with three demos, so I'll have to toggle between the slides and the browser. And there will be some more time for an outstanding questions at the end of the webinar. So today I'm going to show you how um, you can visualize your own data in the um, Ensemble genome browser. So Ensemble allows you to upload your, upload your own data and display it in the browser, plot it along the genome. And there are two ways of doing it, depending on the size of your data. Um, for small, for small uh, files, you can upload them directly to Ensemble. And in that case, we save the data. Therefore, it's not possible um, for large files above 20 um, MB to be uploaded in that way. For larger files, um, they need to be attached as remote files, which means you first need to put them online on either FTTP or FTP site and provide a link in the ensemble, basically um, point the ensemble towards the file. There is no size limit um, as we do not host those files. So in that scenario, you can make the files as big as you want. So what is great about visualizing your own data in Ensemble is that you can save them to your Ensemble account and the Ensemble accounts are totally free. Um, you, do not get any, you, don't, you do not get any correspondence from us. Um, you can then share um, your data or the visual representation of it with your collaborators. You can also generate nice figures, which you can then use in your research um, as um, Ensemble is totally uh, free to use in open access. On the downside, um, we only offer trivial security. So when you upload your data um, to Ensemble, it's not being incorporated to our database. It doesn't become public and nothing like it, but we don't have a bank level security. So we cannot protect your data from, from being hacked basically. Therefore, please bear in mind if you're working with sensible data like patient's data, that it should be um, pseudonymized before putting it online. So we support a bunch of different file formats, um, allowing for um, visualizing features like genes or variants or structural variants. Um, also, um, you can also plot different values and scores. Uh, you can plot them along the genome as well, um, as you can visualize reads aligned to the reference, for example, BAMP files. It's not an exhaustive list, um, and if you'd like to know more about their supported file formats and their specification, um, you can check out our documentation page, which can be found under this link below. Um, and I'm going to also show it um, show that to you uh, later on during our demonstration. So if you're working with larger files and you wonder um, how to host them online, we recommend either FTP sites if your institute, if your institution has one. Um, alternatively, you can try using Cyverse or Figshare. And we do have a blog post on using Cyverse, which you can find under the link below. So it's best to see it all in action. So and now we'll visualize two different file types, starting with a small BED file. So BED is a small feature file um, 
composed of one line per feature. So in this case, we're dealing with um, three large deletions found in patients with um, microcephaly. Um, this file form, um, those deletions are described by um, tab separated columns with first column being the chromosome. The second column represents the start um, coordinate, the third column being the end position, and the fourth column is optional. Um, it's basically a name of a feature. And um, here um, um, the features are named, so the deletions are named after the patient. So we have P1, P2, and P3. Um, there are also extra columns that you could add um, and you can read more about bed files um, in our documentation pages. So I'm going to jump out of the presentation now. I'm going to copy. So you can just type um, www.ensemble.org to go to the Ensemble um, homepage. And there are few different ways of uploading your data to Ensemble. I'm going to show you um, a couple of them, starting with scrolling to the bottom and going to use my own data in Ensemble section. I'm going to click here. Um, that takes you to um, our documentation and help on using your own data in Ensemble. So first, I'd like to point out the file types link over here. I'm going to click on it and that takes you to a page with all of our supported file formats that you can upload and their specification and description. So if you're not sure what any of these mean or how, how they're formatted, you can just click on, on them individually to get some background information. So for example, I'm going to click on bed file. Um, which takes me to um, documentation and, and detailed description of this file format. So for now, I'm going to go back using the back uh, button in the browser. So I could upload my data by clicking on this blue button here, um, which reads custom tracks. Uh, that should take you straight to the data submission form, but I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm going to show you other way of doing it. I'm going to click on the Ensemble logo to go back to the home page. So the other possibility is to use the home homepage. So I'm going to click on human. where you can find display your data in Ensemble link. This link is, should take you to the data submission form, exactly same data submission form, um, where first thing to do is to provide a name for our data. I'm gonna name it a bed demo. We then need to provide our data. So I can either um, paste the data in the provided text box, which is not what I have copied. Let me just go back, back to the presentation. Here we are. Try alternative data in the text box. Um, I could upload the file using the browse uh, button, um, and that way I can find it, um, the, the file in my computer and upload it. Um, the last thing to do is to choose the data format. I'm going to click on the drop down list and I'm going to choose bed. 
um, if I chosen a file from my desktop or from my computer, Ensemble would automatically recognize the extension and would have chosen the file format for me. But by, by pasting the, the data in the um, data box, um, we have to provide, we have to specify the data format. So the last thing to do is to click on the add data button. So hopefully um, you got a message, thank you message saying that your data has been uploaded successfully. Um, and um, we also get an option to go to the nearest region with data. I'm gonna do it by clicking on the uh, coordination uh, link. That takes you straight to the location tab, region in detail view, um, which contains the data um, that we just uploaded. It might take a while to load, depending on your internet connection. For the purpose of this um, webinar, I already preloaded the data in case my co uh, connection is a bit slow. And here you can see um, this is a region in detail with a default standard ensemble tracks. You can see the genome assembly here as a contact track. Um, you can see the genes tracks. And here on the top, we've got the newly added um, custom data track that we named a bed demo. You can see um, our deletions are represented as bro uh, brown uh, bars with the names we provided. So P1, P2, and P3. And you can see that they overlap um, some genes. And this track behaves as any other tracks in Ensemble. So you can manipulate it, you can move it around, you can change the um, style um, of the track, and you can also remove um, if you, you've done working with it. So now I'm going to show you how we can upload, how we can attach um, bigger fires uh, using Ensemble. I'm going to go back to my slides. Um, and we have a second demonstration where we're going to visualize um, the RNA-seq Illumina reads from a human chromosome 20. Um, this bump file can be found under the following link. So have a look, let's have a look at the um, online folder containing the file. I'm just going to copy this link and I'm going to go back to the browser. So that's the link we've just copied. So we, here we have online directory listing a bunch of BAM files. Um, you can see that all of those BAM files, they have a corresponding index file, uh, which is basically BAM.BAI. Note that um, when you're providing a link to um, your reads in Ensemble, you only have to provide a link to a BAM file, not a link to the directory. You don't need to provide a link to the index file either, but the index file has to be there um, for Ensemble to work. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy a link to this BAM file of chromosome 20. I'm going to select copy link location. And then you can add your custom data as well directly from um, the location tab by clicking on custom tracks a blue button. 
even though it's going to be all listed here in this table, but we want to add some more data. So I'm going to click on this blue button here, add more data. We have to provide a name for our track. I'm going to call it uh, BAM demo this time. And now um, all I have to do is just to provide the links or URL to um, the file, which is hosted in a public directory. Um, I can uh, paste the link directly here. And in this, this case, you can see Ensemble automatically recognize the file extension and picked the data format for me. All I have to do now is just to simply click on add data. So I got a message saying that the data has been attached. I can save and exit. Um, the data is going to load, but it's um, there's a reads from chromosome 20, so I'm not going to see um, any reads in this region. So let's jump to any gene on chromosome 20. Uh, let's say CDH22 and go. And again, you know, it's quite a big file containing lots of data and lots of read. Therefore, it might take a while to load. Give it a minute, give it some time. And again, for the purpose of this webinar, um, I've got the data preloaded in another tab for you. So here we have um, our gene CDH22 on chromosome 20. And again, you can see the default ensemble tracks and then new track with our BAM file named BAM demo, um, the gray peaks or the histograms represents the reads coverage. You can see that the reads are actually split into two tracks, forward and um, reversed. The actual reads are um, represented here below the coverage. And let's have a closer look um, by drawing a box around one of the peaks and jumping to this region. Let's do it again, see the individual read set. And again, to spare you some waiting, I've got that preloaded just here. So this is only 30 base pair window where you can see um, the read sequence. So the reference sequence is represented here on the bottom. The actual reads are shown in gray with the consensus sequence from reads here on top. And the height of the base over here indicates their reads coverage. Um, you can see that if there are any mismatches between the reads and the uh, reference sequence, they're highlighted in red. Um, and you can see both, for example, some sequencing error, errors potentially, uh, but also um, SNPs. So you can use this um, as a quality check, for example, if you wanted to visually examine your reads or some variant calls. Um, So let's go back to presentation because I have the final demo for today. Before we finish one size data, um, Ensemble also allows you to add a lot of publicly available data via Track Hath Registry. So a track, um, as you might already know, is, is a type of data plotted along the genome. And a track hub is basically a set of tracks. While a track hub registry um, is an online um, repository of various track hubs shared by either a large consortia 
or individual researchers. And you can also contribute um, uh, to track hub registry yourself by sharing your data and creating um, your own track hubs and sharing them with the public. So what we're going to do now, we're going to view the main select um, version of point in hub in Ensemble. Main stands for a matched annotation from the NCBI and Ample EBI, which basically it's an annotation that provides one well-supported transcript for every protein coding gene agreed to be um, the most biologically relevant and identical between NCBI and Ensemble. And there are two ways of adding track hubs to Ensemble. So first, you can um, use the track hub registry itself. And I'm just going to show you how to do that. So let's jump out of the presentation and go to the browser. You can go to um, track half registry by typing www.ready.org and that's the home page. Um, you can see um, you have an option to submit your own data and share them with the public. I'm going to use the main search function to simply search. You can see two hits returned. Um, it seems it's a, duplic a duplicated track. And to add them to Ensemble, simply just click on the blue on the um, on the view, view in genome browser button, which um, shows you a drop-down list of different genome browsers you might use. Um, I'm gonna go for Ensemble. I'm gonna click on Ensemble from the list which should um, jump you directly uh, to the Ensemble browser to um, a region in detail page. And again, it might take um, a while to load. Here we are. Um, you can see that the main select hub has been added to, um, to Ensemble. I'm just going to click save and close. Um, and let's let's go to a gene um, that I know has a main select annotation. I'm going to type ESPN as a gene name and click go. If it's loading, I can again um, spare you waiting time by going to preload a page. You can see um, that this gene has um, a multiple um, alternative transcripts, um, while the newly added track um, main selects only lists one most um, representative transcript um, from both Ensemble, indicated here in red, and from RefSeq in blue. You can also search for tracks, track hubs um, here in Ensemble. To do so, just click on Custom Tracks. And then from the left-hand menu, select Track Hub Registry Search. I could type main over here and search for it. As you can see, those hubs are already attached. Once, um, once you don't need your data anymore because you've done working with it, it's a good practice to delete or at least disconnect um, your tracks as a large amount of data might slow and sample down. To do so, go to custom tracks,
where you can see all your added tracks um, listed here in this table where you have options to uh, um, either share them or permanently delete or just temporary um, disconnect. So I'm just gonna um, disconnect all of them. Um, and then I might just save. This is the end of our demonstration. I hope you found it useful. And there are just a couple of general things to wrap up before um, we move on to questions. Let me go back to our presentation. If you'd like to know more, um, we have a bunch of online courses and recorded webinars and lots of help and documentation on, on our online pages. Uh, we also have a YouTube account uh, with recordings of webinars like that one, but also uh, longer courses. If you have any questions, please drop us an email at, ensem uh, at helpdesk at ensemble.org. We also have public mailing lists that you can join for more information and updates. Follow us on social media, on either Facebook or Twitter. We also have a blog, which I mentioned before. You can find extra information there. And finally, if you use our resources, please, please do cite us. So Ensemble is totally free to use, um, but we really appreciate citing us so that we know who is using us and how. That also ha helps um, with our funding flowing. And finally, I'd like to thank the entire Ensemble team, um, which is um, shown here in this photo from our last um, retreat. And, um, I would also like to thank our sponsors, uh, especially the Wellcome Trust. I'm happy to take any other questions. I think there, there are a few remarks from um, uh, Melissa as well. Thank you very much, Miha, for an interesting webinar. Firstly, thank you to everybody for being patient with the few sound blips we had there. As you are no doubt aware, the uh, coronavirus situation has changed things a little and we're now broadcasting from our living rooms. So thank you for being patient. This webinar is part of our regular Wednesday afternoon webinar series. So usually every Wednesday we run a webinar on one of the EBI training resources. All of those are free and you can find out more information about those on our website. So we do have time for questions. Uh, Astrid and Ben have been very busily answering questions throughout the webinar. If there are any more questions, please do write them into the chat box and we can read a few out. So there is a question coming through and forgive me if this is one that's already been answered. It is, can you use a SAM file? Um, so some files are um, so BAM files are like compressed SAM files. And to be honest, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'm sure Ben and Astrid would know. I, I'm not. I don't. I'm not entirely sure. So Astrid has answered into the chat box that SAM files are not currently supported, and that you should use a BAM file mm -hmm. instead. So another question that's just come in is from someone who's thinking about submitting a genome data to GenBank. Is it a problem if it's previously been uploaded in Ensemble? Yeah, there shouldn't be any problems with, with um, data being um, already available in Ensemble and then submitting it to GenBank. Okay, thank you. So there was a, a question about the types of file types. Are they dependent on what you want to visualize? So yeah, what was the, the example? Do you have to use the BAM for example, file to... For NGS or VCIF file for variants? Yes, that's right. So um, basically the file type underlines the data type that you want to you want to visualize or you work with, right? So VCF files 
contain um, information on variants. So if you want to plot your variants along the genome, you're going to use VCF file. If you want to plot alignment, you're going to go for data types and data formats that store alignment files, like for example, uh, BAM files. Okay, thank you. So one question that's come just come through is, is Ensemble part of the UCSS genome browser? And no, UCSS genome browser is another genome browser. Um, it's totally independent from Ensemble. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Are there any more questions this afternoon? Oh yes, there is one that's just come through. So the question is, with human data, we often need to work on secure servers with no internet connection. Can the Ensemble site be mirrored um, so that you can visualize tracks for this type of data? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry, I lost connection again. What was the question? The question was about using human data and needing to work on secure servers. Is yeah. there a way that people can use this in a secure environment? Mm. Um, so again, I'm, I can't name any off the top of my head. I'm sure there are ways of either, you know, working with Ensemble offline or, or, or finding some secure um, connections. And again, um, if you'd like to know more about that, just drop us an email and I can, I can you know, ask around and look it up for you. Drop us an email at uh, helpdesk at ensemble.org. Okay, thank you. Okay, seeing as we're, we're having a few internet problems this afternoon, I think we're going to wrap up the webinar. Thank you very much, Mihao, for presenting the webinar and to Ben and Astrid for answering questions as we went through. Thank you for thank joining you. us today. And we hope to see you again in another webinar very soon. See you next time. Goodbye.